At dawn on February 17, 1979, about 60,000 Chinese troops landed in Vietnam after Deng Xiaoping's statement that he wanted to teach Vietnam a lesson. This defensive counterattack, as the Chinese called it, ended after 29 days and on 16th March 1979 with heavy casualties on both sides. However, each side believes that they have achieved the highest goal. 40 plus years have passed. Let's look back at the gains and losses in Deng Xiaoping's gamble to understand the significance of the war that Lee Kuan Yew later said changed the course of East Asia's history. The cause of the war. China called the war in 1979 a treason in self-defense after a series of aggressive actions by Vietnam in the 70s, such as nationality deprivation, property nationalization, indirectly sending thousands of people back to China, attacking border villages, attacking Chinese fishing boats operating in the Spratly Islands that China considers to be its territory. Most of these statements by Beijing only serve as an excuse to legitimize military action on Vietnam. Because, first, Cambodia under Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge regime also persecuted and killed a lot of Chinese people, but China considers it an ally. This is a manifestation of a double standard. Second, the possibility of Vietnam aggression on the northern border is low. A country with a main army stationed in Cambodia, can it act so disrespectfully? In fact, many reports claim that it is China who has repeatedly violated the Vietnamese side. It's not natural for the Vietnamese in the border provinces even in Hanoi, to dig shelters or seek refuge before the actual war took place. People fear and prepare for what, if not the sign of a war that is clearly coming? So after removing the Chinese claims, what was the real reason for the border war in 1979? To answer this question, it is first necessary to better understand the historical context at that time. In 1975, the pro-China Pol Pot regime in Cambodia began to persecute and kill Vietnamese people, forcing more than 150,000 people to flee their country. Under the guise of Beijing and Phnom Penh, Hanoi began to put pressure on the 1.2 million Chinese community living and working in Vietnam to prevent internal and external attacks if there was a war happened. However, there has been no drastic repressive action as claimed by the Chinese government. Most just stop at background checks, don't allow people of Chinese descent to join the armed forces, in fact, Beijing itself also wants overseas Chinese to return home to destroy Vietnam's economy. They continuously carried out propaganda actions that caused confusion in this community, and at the same time aroused a movement demanding the return of Chinese nationality through organizations such as the Progressive Overseas Chinese, the Patriotic Overseas Chinese, the Patriotic Overseas Chinese Student. Within a few months, 170,000 Vietnamese people of Chinese origin crossed the sea to China. This wave created a lot of economic and political upheaval in Vietnam at that time. It should be understood that while receiving aid from China during the war, Vietnam created favorable conditions for the Chinese to do business and develop the domestic economy. Before the liberation of the South, thanks to these incentives, they acquired an important role in the economy of Vietnam, especially in the South. Faced with this situation, the more aggressive China becomes, the more Vietnam is pro-Soviet. In November 1978, we signed a security treaty with this great power, putting China even more in a position of feeling threatened. Let's look at the four-sided enemy position of China at that time. Above is the Soviet Union. To the left is pro-Soviet Afghanistan, possibly even Iran. Many scholars believe that the Islamic Revolution in Iran in January 1979 involved Soviet intervention. Underneath, there is pro-Soviet Vietnam and is a brother to Laos and has just overthrown the pro-Chinese regime in Cambodia, which means it's likely to be a pro-Soviet Indochina. The Soviet Union is negotiating the strategic arms reduction with the U.S. If successful, it'll be free to deal with Beijing. Faced with this situation, China was forced to react and Deng chose to attack Vietnam to achieve three major goals. First, not letting Vietnam influence the Indochina countries. China has always supported the idea that the Indochinese region should have four countries, including North and South Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, with no one being too dominant and all dependent on them. The Chinese have never wanted a unified and strong Vietnam right next to them, not to mention it is a pro-Soviet Vietnam and has great influence in the region. Secondly, prove to the U.S. that the Soviet Union is not as strong as believed. Deng predicted the Soviets would hesitate to engage due to slow troop mobilization. Even if their allies were attacked, success would isolate the Soviets' superpower status. Thirdly, awaken the exhausted, undisciplined army after the Cultural Revolution and remove the paper tiger image in the region, showing off its international prestige by attacking Vietnam's highly experienced and skilled army, which had just emerged from two major wars with two great powers, and at the same time proved the opposite to the China that its national defense needs to be rectified. 
Therefore, launching a border war is a very carefully calculated move, not as simple as Deng's statement as follows. Our goal is simply to break the pride of Vietnam, that their world's third military might is just a myth. We don't want to take the land. We don't want to take the land. Furthermore, let them know that they can't do whatever they want. Chinese preparations. Deng Xiaoping realized that the Chinese military was inferior to the Vietnamese army in discipline, experience, and weaponry. A prolonged war is impossible because the main Vietnamese army returning from Cambodia would pose significant challenges and casualties for China. Additionally, if the Soviet Union promptly mobilized its troops to support its allies by attacking China, it would create a pincer position. Hence, the Vietnam-China border war, as Deng declared, should not exceed the 1962 war with India, which lasted 33 days. In 1978, China established diplomatic relations with the U.S. after a prolonged impasse due to issues related to Taiwan sovereignty. Deng visited the U.S. discussing Soviet Union and Vietnam issues and consistently affirming a plan to attack Vietnam to attack Vietnam to demonstrate to the U.S. that the Soviet Union lacked the power to intervene. What Deng needed was American silence, which he thought would confuse the Soviet Union to step in to stop China. Deng also cleverly visited the U.S. before firing to create a feeling of U.S. support. At the same time, despite confidence in the cold weather and lightning tactics not allowing the Soviet Union enough preparation time, Deng ordered the evacuation of the population and sent around 300,000 troops to the northern border, ready to defend for the worst. In 1978-79, to 79, Chinese leaders visited Southeast Asian countries to spread the hegemonic plot of Vietnam and the Soviet Union isolating Vietnam in the region. The threat of war was imminent. In part two, we'll delve into the war's specific developments. For now, enjoy the video and don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you're interested in more content like this, check out Spider Room. This is Barack Obama signing off. Bye and see you on.